Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our close-up cat watercolor project. <laughs> this is part of our Paws with Pals box and if you didn't know, this box is celebrating our four-legged friends. So I thought uh, we, our little, my little pal Birdie would um, be in the intros for these because well one, she's just so dang cute. She's too cute. She's too cute. She's a golden doodle. She's a little over a year. And um, I just want to let you guys know that this project is a little bit more intermediate based. So if you're just starting out on your watercolor journey, be kind to yourself if you're trying this. Um, and if you wanna try and do some other projects first to warm yourself up, that might be a good idea. But this one is a little bit tricky, but I think we can do hard things, okay? I have faith in you. I have faith in you too. Wait, were you talking to me or the people? Well, now I, now I don't know. <laughs> We have Michael here working the cameras. Hello. And, okay, Bird, you're going to lay down while I teach, okay? Can I get on? Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, so we are going to be doing this project in seven steps. So our very first step is we are going to put in our background. Our second step is we are going to do a light brown wash over our cat. Our third step is we are going to do our ears, eyes, nose, and mouth. Our fourth step is we're gonna start putting in the darker brown marks and markings on our cat. Our fifth step is we will do our eyes. Our sixth step is we will do even more darker marks and fill out the rest of the fur if we haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and then the seventh step is whiskers and any finishing details. Now a couple of things. One, um, if you're following the step-by-step, -step, I switched up the steps a little bit. And I do that because sometimes I think about after I've done a project and I've, I sometimes can think of a simpler way to do it. So that's when I might make some slight adjustments. I just want you to know that there are multiple ways that you can approach a project. So by me showing you different options, you'll find out what works for you as well. So um, I just wanted to call that out. The second thing is that this photo was actually um, turned in from our community. So if you're part of the Let's Make Art Watercolor Facebook group, oh, a couple months ago, we did a post asking you to share your portraits of your pets um, for a special project I was working on. And this cat photo was given to us um, by, let me make sure I get her name right. Um, Kristen Y. So Kristen, thank you so much for sharing your cat with us. I just loved how close up it was. I thought that that would be a great way for us to practice, you know, just faces of our cats. Um, yeah. Also, you got a cute cat. You do have a very cute cat. Although I didn't see a name posted and that's okay if you don't want to share your pet's name. But Scruggles. Scruggles? <laughs> the name of this cat that's it <laughs> I, I can sense these things and then i have the painted reference photo which you guys will have and then also on my ipad here i'm going to have the photo the actual photo reference photo here that i will be referring to also so that will be on this ipad when we get started i am using four paint brushes today i have a round two round six one round 12 and one inch wash um, please use whatever brushes you already have. And I'm using five paint colors. I have Rose Red, Honey Brown, Payne's Gray, and Deep Blue, and Bleed Proof White. So I have those colors spread out on my palette. Um, I have my water here. I've already transferred my outline to my paper and I taped it off. Um, please know that because we're going to be doing our eyes near the end, it's always gonna look weird till the end. The eyeless animal. Yeah, it just does. So give your painting a chance before you decide on anything. And then the very last thing I have to acknowledge this is I struggle with painting cats. I don't know why, it's just something, I can paint a dog like nobody's business, cats I really struggle with, but the only way to improve is to keep trying. So we are doing, I'm keep going, we're doing cats, I'm gonna get this. And sometimes I, I also have to give myself a mental trick because um, if I'm approaching a project with this mental chip on my shoulder where I'm like, oh, I can't paint this anyway, then I'm gonna have a hard time. Um, so sometimes um, what I do, like when I went to go approach this project, creating this project, I thought, 
you're not painting a cat, Sarah. You're painting a dog. It's just a dog. You're just painting a dog. A funny dog. A funny dog. It's just a funny dog. And um, that made it a little bit easier. So that might be silly, but I just want to let you know that there are things I struggle with too. And sometimes I just have to trick my brain of just saying, it's okay. It's no big deal. You paint these all the time. There's nothing special about this one or different. It's a dog. It's a cat dog and it will be okay. Sarah, I know you're stressing, but I just want to take this moment to assure you that I think it's going to be perfect. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I've been holding that one in <laughs> since the beginning. Perfect this... timing. Per uh, uh, perfect timing. There it is. <laughs> All right, let's do our oath and then we'll get started. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Okay, let me get this up. And I'm going to hide this so you can't see our passcode. There we go. It's 8675309. <laughs> yep. Okay, so here we go. So let's start with doing our background um, first. So I'm going to take my one inch wash and I am going to do like a desaturated light blue. So I'm going to take my deep blue. We can move this bleed proof white. And I'm going to pull some of that to the center. And I'm going to take some Payne's Gray. The Payne's Gray is just going to dull the blue. Um, now, the reason why I wanted, like, how do I say this? If you look at all of the projects in the box, um, I have a bunch of different backgrounds. I have one project with no background. I have some with like a full background. Um, and this is just a flat wash background. So I'm trying to show you that there are many different ways that you can actually paint animals and they don't all have to be the same. I personally love animals with no backgrounds, but I know that for some people, they don't really care for that. So I'm showing you how you can add a background without it overtaking your painting. And sometimes just a simple, even wash can do that for you. So I have my painting tape down. I'm taking my one inch desaturated blue and I'm just going to add this color in and I'm just going to work around. If you overlap a little bit, that's okay. Try not to overlap too much though um, because watercolor is transparent. So we will be able to see the blue underneath the watercolor. And then I'm gonna keep working my brush back and forth across what I've painted to make it even. Kind of try and blend out any lines or things like that. I'm so curious why you're uncomfortable painting cats. And I know you probably don't know, but it just seems like such a weird mental roadblock, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I'm uncomfortable painting cats because like at first I wasn't uncomfortable painting cats, but I just like the more, I, how do I say this? When I painted them, I just didn't love how they turned out. I always feel like I overwork them mm -hmm. where with dogs, I, I love, like, I'm really proud of my dog paintings. When they're, they're done, I'm like, look at that dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a dog. But for cats, I'm always like, did I overwork that too much? Mm. So um, I didn't know. I didn't start with the mental block. How about that? Perfect. <laughs> and then I'm going to dry. Okay. So we put in step one, we put in our background wash, and we're just going to leave it. We're not going to touch the background anymore. And now we're going to paint our cat. Now what I'm going to do is we are going to do our first wash like our lightest value layer. So when you're painting animals and pets, I've said before, there's different ways that you can approach painting them. One way that you can approach painting them is starting from lightest to darkest. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my, you can look at your painted reference photo or this photo, and I'm going to say, okay, what is the lightest value brown here? And if I'm looking at my cat, I see kind of like by the eyes, the mouth, the edge of this fur here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So basically that's the color and value I'm gonna try and mix and paint. And then after I get that 
color, I'm gonna put that all over my cat and then we layer the darker, the medium values and darker values on top. So the first step is identifying the lightest value and hue and painting that in first, okay? Um, and just know like that is traditionally how people start a watercolor painting is by doing the lightest value first and laying around top. I have to admit though that, that I don't always paint that way. Sometimes I'll paint, um, go from dark and then just blend out to light. Okay, so I grabbed a little bit of honey brown, I grabbed a little Payne's gray, I grabbed a little red, and I grabbed a little bit of blue. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to desaturate this honey brown. We do have a a brown here, but when you add water to it, it turns it yellow. And this is not yellow, it's more tan. So I'm going to, I mixed all four colors together. Now I have this kind of like orangey peach. And now I'm gonna take some Payne's gray to it and see what happens. That's feeling better, but it's still feeling a little bit red. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit more yellow because yellow and blue are green and green is the opposite of red. Let's do a little bit more yellow. Okay, that feels better. And then now that I have this color, I am going to just start putting it in. So I like to just do a, sw a swoosh with that and then just use water to blend out. And that's our cat. Thanks for painting with us today. We'll <laughs> and that's see you it. next week. That's it. Thank you. Cats aren't that bad. <laughs> yeah. If you have a cat at home, now's a good time to give it a little pet. Yeah. Our friends have a cat named Whiskers that I just, I love him. I love that cat too. And actually it was so cute. We were over at their house and Michael was like, I'm going to kidnap this cat because it was just like laying on his chest purring. It was so cute. I do love that cat. My, um, my, our son, Arlo, also loves that cat. He'll yep. just go and lay his head on the cat's belly. And he's nice to her. I mean, nice to him. Like, they're nice to each other. Like, the cat doesn't get mad at Arlo for... Being a stage five clinger? Yeah. Arlo likes all animals. Oh, he's, yes. He's a sweet little boy. Yeah, our, um, so as you can see, I'm just filling it in. I'm gonna avoid the center of the ears, but I'm gonna go down into this area. Um, so our son Arlo is three, and if you've been paying with us for a while, you'll remember during the pandemic when he was a newborn and I was filming tutorials with him strapped to my, strapped to my chest, but he is now three, and um, he loves all things small and animals and babies we went to the pool the other day and there was probably like a 10 month old baby and he just went baby baby and went and hugged her and would not leave that child alone let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> i can tell that the mom was like okay because he was just thrilled okay so i'm just kind of loosely painting in the rest of the cat this is our first layer. We're gonna do so many layers on top. We're essentially getting rid of the scariness of the white of the paper while also putting in our lightest value. And then we can always build and layer from here, okay? And you'll see that my wash is imperfect, right? There are some areas that are darker, some that are lighter. I'm okay with that. Because we mix this color, I also have slightly different hues within here. I'm okay with that too. I feel like that's more true to how we see cats in general um, or colors or things like that. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay. Uh, I realize I missed this area. Can you go ahead and hit that area, please? Yes. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know why I just leave like a gap and I'm like, oh shoot, there's this big chunk missing around the eye. What's that Japanese technique called? Kin kintsugi? Is that where you make things imperfect on purpose? I know I've asked that before, but... I no, wabi-sabi wabi is about embracing the imperfect and impermanent. Kintsuki is when you they use gold. Oh, 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 okay. 
for um, pottery or ceramics at break. And yep. it's this whole concept that our um, the imperfections actually make us more strong, more beautiful, and more unique. Well, that's gorgeous. Yeah, isn't it? There's this other concept, and I don't know the name of it because I don't speak Japanese, but I've heard it a few times where, like, these really fine Japanese pottery makers make these perfect little cups, and at the end they, like, push their fingernail into it so it's imperfect. Really? Because they think that it, it makes it better when it has a little imperfection in it. Cool. That's what I was saying about you missing the spot on the cat. You were doing that on purpose. <laughs> yes, that was it. Okay, so now what we are going to do is are our ears, eyes, nose, and mouth, which kind of reminds me of the head, shoulders, knees, and toes song every time I say that. <laughs> is that a common song that people know, right? Knees it and has toes. to be. It has to be. Okay, so for our ears, um, we're going to paint the inside of them. And this is kind of tricky. So the inside, like if you look past like all of the fur coming out they're kind of like a pinkish more skin tone but the edges are a little bit darker because the hair is kind of on the outside of them but then we have long hair in the middle okay so there's a lot going on there but ears i always paste kind of like paint fast and loose so i'm not going to stress too much about it i'm going to grab some of this rose red i'm going to grab some of this honey brown i'm going to tone it down with a little bit of Payne's gray so it's kind of like this fleshy brown color, okay? And then I'm going to just wet the inside of the ear using just water. And then I'm gonna take some of this kind of rosy skin tone color and drop that in. But we want it to stay like a fairly light value. That might be too much paint. So I'm just gonna lift and dab on my paper towel. So now it's more just this pink, okay? And then while it's wet like this, I'm gonna mix a dark brown, take some honey brown, take some Payne's gray, take some red. Let's desaturate that with a tiny bit of blue. And then I'm just gonna go along the edge here and as you can see, it's touching the wet. And so it's kind of bleeding out, but I like that. I really like that look. So um, I'm doing that on purpose. I keep thinking about your head, shoulders, knees, and toes question, if it's a well-known song. And um, <laughs> you and I are not a very um, diverse sample group, I decided. We're from the same area of the same state. Yes. Similar family types. So yeah, we both know it, but that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other ear. So I'm using water, fill it in, using this fleshy brown color. What a beautiful name, right? Fleshy brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loosely painting it in, letting that color move, taking this dark brown mixture going along the edge and really just letting that color bleed into the pink and we'll go back and we'll put the hairs on top but we're going to let that dry for a second now we're going to move on to the nose so i'm going to switch to my two and this is also like a fleshy pink nose so i already have that color mixed i might grab let's grab a little bit more of the rose red and if you look at the nose itself it's a little bit darker right at the top and at the bottom okay so I'm going to put in this pink color using my two and then I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's gray mix that in with that same kind of fleshy color and along the top, just kind of touch that. And then along the bottom. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and just blend these colors together. So it's a smoother transition and not such a hard line. My mom used to have a cat named Romeo. He was a big boy. And I remember him sitting on my lap and I'm petting him. 
and he was just tolerating it. He didn't enjoy it. He was just tolerating it. And I just thought, you would eat me if you could, you know? <laughs> That's what he was thinking. Yeah. He's like, I wish I could eat this human. I wish I was big enough that I could just eat. <laughs> okay, and I did one extra layer of rose red because I wanted that nose to be a little bit stronger pink. And also, don't forget the little corners here too. Now we'll go back in and we'll put in like the black around the nose. We're just putting in the color for now and we'll let that dry. And then we'll go back in and put in the dark area, okay? So we're gonna leave that. Next thing that we're going to focus on is we are going to look at the eyes. Now, what how I like to approach eyes, no, 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 we're not doing eyes, sorry. <laughs> we are going to do the mouth. I want to paint, let me explain my thinking to you. There is a lot of color going on around the eyes, a lot of marks. You see all the different marks going on? Yes. Um, I like to put color in and blend out and things like that. Now, what's really important when it comes to doing pet portraits or painting animals in general that I try and pay attention to is I always try and keep their eyes sharp. So the eyes are something that I do last usually or after I do a lot of the work around the eye because then I have less chance of my wet brush accidentally hitting, you know, this the pupil area and all of that black bleeding mm. out into my cat. Smart. Um, but I will say I talked to someone. This lady came to visit me in the store. She's fabulous. She is also a llama. Her name is Carol, my friend Carol. And she also does pet portraits, but she told me she likes to do the eyes first because they're the hardest part. And so if her eyes are first and done, then she feels confident she can continue because she doesn't think she's going to mess up the rest. Does that make sense? Also smart. Yeah. It's heartbreaking that when you get to this part, like at the very end and you mess it up and they're not right, you're like, no, all of that time. You know what I mean? So I want to show you two different options in this pet portrait, I'm going to be doing the eyes near the end, but in the happy dog pet portrait, I will be doing the eyes first. So you guys can then decide what works best for you. Just know it, it's your choice. Okay. So we started to do the nose. Now we're going to put in um, a little color around the mouth. So if you look at the mouth itself, we have to think about how the mouth kind of rounds and there's the, um, the little bottom jaw right here too. So we have to define that line and then put in a little bit of a shadow underneath to show that it's kind of turning away from us. So I'm going to take my round six. I'm gonna take like just a darker brown. Don't do a pink, do like more of a gray brown. And just kind of like right here, I'm gonna put this in and then I'm gonna rinse my brush and blend out so it's not such a hard line. And already we have a little bit of a dimension, right? So we're just putting in a little bit of shape and then um, kind of right underneath the nose where it meets the bottom jaw. If you look here, that bottom is highlighted, but the top is a little bit more in shadow. So let's put that in. I'm gonna grab a little bit more brown. That feels good. And then I'm going to put in the black around my cat's nose. So I'm gonna switch to my two. I'm gonna grab Payne's gray. And just kind of following the shape of my outline. This is like the nostrils, right? And then if you look closely, there's this little thin line in between coming out from right there. And then if our mouth has dried, we can do one more little detail line right in there, kind of really separating that out. 
Okay. That little line always, I mean, I'm going to nerd out for a second, but um, I went to school for biology, in case you guys don't know out there. But when animals with bilateral symmetry, like most humans, things that have two, mm -hmm. they actually like split and develop like mirrors. Oh, and really? So when I think, when you see like the line on the cat's lip, it just reminds me yeah. that like you develop as a mirror, a mirrored image, you know? That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to, um, we're on to step four, and this is where things get a little bit tricky because we're going to start to try and put in all of the different marks for our cat. Now, I want to acknowledge that um, this is hard. I'm saying, I mean, it's hard for me, and I want to also acknowledge that, um, like, if you look at this reference photo, also this reference photo, they're not exact. There are differences between these two. And also my painting is gonna be different from this and from this. Um, and that's just part of human nature. So I want to acknowledge that that is okay. So I'm gonna mix a darker brown. I'm gonna grab honey brown. Let's grab some Payne's gray. And I'm also going to, let's do a little bit more Payne's gray. I'm gonna do a few different browns here. So this is like a really, really dark grayish brown because it's more Payne's gray than honey brown okay and then let's do honey brown over here let's introduce some red and let's introduce some blue and that's still maybe a little bit too red so I'm going to do a little bit more blue we have a friend barking can you yeah. hear <laughs> so there is that color and okay, we're gonna start with those two colors first. So now let's look at, I'm gonna look for the medium values on my cat. So to show you the difference, the darker values on my cat are these kind of markings right here on the forehead. The medium values are kind of this shadow on this nose, on the left side of the nose and on the cheek right here. That's more of a dark value that blends into a medium. So so much of recreating a photo or something that you see is identifying the different values and how they relate to each other. This takes time and practice, so don't worry if you're not quite there yet, but that's a big step in being able to recreate your own art. So if I'm looking for these medium values, I know that there's some here, right? So I'm going to take my six with this medium value. I always like to put the color in first and then I'm just going to blend that color out. And usually when I put the color in first, I'm putting it in an area that's gonna be darker. So I didn't put my brown here. I put my brown here because if you look at these two, this one is a slightly darker value. So then on my painting, that right there is a slightly darker value. And then up here, it's a little bit darker value too. So I could actually just drop that in right now. Okay. And then let's just kind of, I'm a huge fan of blending out. And if you don't know what blending out is, basically I'm taking a damp brush that doesn't have any paint on it and then just kind of working out the edges of where there is paint so it's a smooth transition and I don't get hard lines. Okay. Now this brown also goes into the nose as well. So I'm gonna smear that over. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to blend, just using a damp brush. And then this is a lighter value, but you see how there's this strong like V here. Mm -hmm. I just wanna soften that. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of that color and work it back and forth, but not so much that it is um, like the same value as this. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, and then we have some Darker values here. Okay. 
And sometimes I just like a strong hit of color. So like, sometimes I'll just drop in or mix in some honey brown into my brown and just like drop that in. Um, even, I don't know, I guess that's, it's not like it has this bright brown spot. It's more just like, I love little edges and pops of color, but that's my personal style. So if you do not appreciate that, that's totally okay and you don't have to do it. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna start putting in, finding like where there are medium values, like right here along the nose, and um, kind of blending those out and into the top of the head. There's also some medium values here. And if you wanna try doing like a rough brush stroke, like a dry brush stroke to get, cause like look at, look at the variation in color here and values. Oh, so yeah. sometimes just using like a rough brush stroke can get all of that. It's fun as you paint this cat and put more and more layers, it's becoming different cats. It kind of looks like one of those like orange cats with a, a white cat with an orange face. Yes. You know what I'm about? Yes. You could stop here and it would be that cat. Yes, totally. So I'm just roughly putting in dry brush this medium value to try and like mimic some of the inconsistencies in the colors and values a little bit. Now the beautiful thing about this method is um, you can always blend it out. So if you don't like it and you're like, mm, something's off here or something like that, then like just blend it all out and start over. And I'm kind of saying this to myself um, because I'm, how do I say this? Gosh, I do say that a lot. Um, <laughs> I try and notice how I'm feeling when I'm painting something and putting words to it because I think it's actually really common to have a lot of the same feelings, but we pretend like we don't um, to seem more whatever. Um, but the reality is I'm looking at this painting right now and saying, is this going to turn out? Like I'm mentally freaking out right now. I am. Um, but I'm reminding myself we're really just in the first stages of painting. Um, and so, you know, like don't judge your painting right now at this space because it's just the beginning. You know what I mean? And we're only like barely halfway done with it. Not even. So I'm telling myself, give it a chance. Give your painting a chance to be something. Now is not the time that you need to start worrying about it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start putting in the um, color and value on like the, the areas outside of the face, so like the neck and the chest. If you notice, we have to show that the face is popping out from the body, right? And so to show that this is popping out and the fur is underneath, there is a dark value right underneath the cheek and the side of the head that then trans transitions into a lighter value. So how I like to do that is I go along the edge here and use a curved brush stroke to paint out. And then I'll use water to blend it to a barely there color. And I'm just mixing browns as I go. As you can see, I get different, slightly different colors as I mix. Um, I'm okay with that because I like variation. If you're not okay with that, then just mix enough on your palette that you can pull from. There are groups of zoologists that argue that cats are not domesticated. Oh, really? I think that's funny. Well, I mean, like, the true mark of domestication is could you survive without the human? Like, Birdie the dog, if she got out in the wild, she probably wouldn't last very long because she's a baby, you mm -hmm. know? But like your cat, if it got out, could hunt and eat and probably be fine. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on the cat too though, right? That's totally true. Because like Birdie 
probably would not survive because, I mean, it's funny. She's, you saw her, she's kind of big, but she's actually kind of a scaredy cat <laughs> dog. She's very timid. Um, but our previous dog before that, Harvey, he was not, and he actually did go out into the wild for weeks. Yeah. We thought he, our neighbor told us he got hit by a car. This was in California. Our neighbor told us he got hit by a car and we were devastated because, and then we were like, well, where did he go? Like we, there was no body. Like yeah. we didn't know what happened to him. And then weeks later, somebody found him and contacted us and he, he came back to us, but he was gone for a couple of weeks, wasn't he? Yeah. And he had like a broken tooth and like, you can tell he, he was living rough. He was living rough, but he made it. So here we go. I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm putting it in my dark and then I'm just blending it out. You can see it's like messy and loose and that's okay, right? But now what we're getting is dimension. Do you see that? Do you see the dimension? It's beautiful. And let's actually do, let's do one more. Swoop. I feel like I blended out too much of the color, especially along the bottom here, or too much of the value. Okay. And then something that you can do instead of blending out is you can blend in. So I would be moving the water towards here instead of moving the paint out. And that achieves what? So the benefit of that is then I know that the value is going to stay here. Where if I blend out, then there's a good chance that that paint and that value goes to the edge. Mm. That's too black. Just mixing more of a neutral brown. Okay. Okay. Now what we are going to do, actually let's do the rest of the body underneath, right? So I'm gonna essentially grab that same brown and then I'm gonna work around the edge. So we're letting that barely there color be kind of like that edge highlight. And then just using water to blend it out. We basically just want there to be a very strong, distinct value edge. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite cat coat pattern? I love orange cats. Oh, orange long-haired cats. Yes. I actually really like um, black cats. Oh, yeah. Black cats are pretty. There was this black little kitten that I remember, um, and she had the brightest blue eyes. Mm. I think I named her. I mean, she wasn't mine. She was like somebody else's, but in my mind, I'm like, your name is Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then same thing for underneath here. Again, just making sure that the color we're putting down and working around is a darker value than what is there. If it's not a darker value, then you can lay this down and then go back in and um, touch it with the darker value. And honestly, like the body, the neck, and all of that kind of stuff is um, secondary in detail. So I'm being pretty quick and loose with this. Um, I'm not paying too much attention because I really want the focus to be on the face, on the eyes. Um, so I'm just like not stressing over this like whole chunk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Basically, we're just trying to show 
There's different layers of fur. We're trying to give a hint of like fluffiness and dimension. Um, but that's like, if we can do that, then I, I call that a job well done and I move on. Just kind of blending out some of this. I like projects like this because they're achievable with patience. You know, you're yes. not doing any crazy techniques. You're not contorting your arm to get this advanced blah, blah, blah. Really, all it takes is just like confidence in yourself and put in the time in. Yeah. And I really think that actually that's a huge difference between like beginner and intermediate is patience because essentially you have to live in this discom the discomfort of having a really funky painting for longer because you're doing more layers and all this stuff. I feel like beginners, we are nervous that it's going to turn out bad. And so we need to see positive results fairly quickly or else as a beginner, we think we're the problem and we just stop. We're like, oh, this strawberry looks funny. I'm not going to do this anymore. Bye. Um, but really, if you can sit with being uncomfortable with your painting looking bad for a bit, then you work through all of that. And at the end, you have lots of layers. You have that depth. And that is what makes your painting feel dimensional. Okay. So now what we are going to do is I'm going to start putting in the darker marks and values here. So I'm going to grab honey brown, and I'm just mixing on top of browns that I already have. Even more Payne's gray, maybe a little bit of red. All right, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go to the mark underneath here. Okay, do you see how dark that is? Mm -hmm. That might be too dark. So because I recognize that, I'm going to add some water to my mixture. And basically just try and lighten it up. So after we put this dark value in, I'm gonna take a damp brush and just kind of blend out, transition out. And then following my outline, following the reference photo, I'm just gonna start putting in these darker marks. Now, um, I need to call attention to something, which is it is likely that because we're doing many layers, your marks got lost underneath paint. That's okay, just eyeball it. Um, the other thing is our values inform us as they go and they will change depending on the other values around it. So sometimes we put in what we think is a light value and then we put in a dark value and all of a sudden that light value is now gone, like it just has disappeared. So we might have to go in and adjust some of our values after. That's okay, that's totally normal. Um, totally normal part of the process. So don't get down on yourself if that is something that you have to do. And then taking a damp brush and blending out, looking at where there's kind of shadows, discolorations, and medium values, and just loosely and roughly putting those in. And now I'm gonna start putting in the back of the head here. And this is a very dark value. If I halfway close my eyes and look at my values, the back of the head is one of the darker areas. So I wanna make sure I'm using a darker brown. And I'm using my six for this, but please use whatever brush you feel comfortable using. And then I'm gonna try and see my marks through all the texture and stuff like this. 
Um, again, if they get lost, just eyeball it. That is what I'm doing right now, just eyeballing it. And then even with this kind of darker color here, I can do a few dry brush in between to capture some of those darker pieces of hair or fur. If you did our along the coast box, we did ocean waves using a dry brush technique. So if you want to like familiarize yourself a little bit more with that te technique, um, then that's a great project to do or box to look at because that is essentially how we create kind of ocean waves and um, all of that kind of stuff. So look at that if you want to. Okay. And here we have it kind of poking up from the side. And it might feel that I'm a bit all over the painting. And the reality is I am. I'm trying to show you guys how I approach painting animals in general. And for me, it's more like um, you can't see everything all at once. So as you're going along working on something, then something po like stands out and you're like, oh, I need to address this area or I need to paint this area. And um, sometimes I'll do it right then or sometimes I'll come back to it. But like, it's very common for you to notice things as you're painting it, especially as you're looking at reference photos and things like that. So give yourself the freedom to um, like jump around. Um, I actually had to change my way of like painting when I started teaching because I realized that teaching in steps was the easiest way for you guys to learn, but that's not what comes naturally to me. And so I've just kind of had to learn how to um, think in that way so then I can better teach you guys. But know that if you don't think in that way, that's okay. And then if you go to create your own painting, I don't want you to feel hung up because you don't know how to do it in steps. A lot of it is just like, We'll just start painting. Put your brush to the paper and notice things along the way. Okay, so now our cat is starting to have those marks um, that we're looking for to show it <laughs> that this cat has. And then before I do the eyes, I'm going to want to kind of soften the transition between some of these marks and these values. So I'm gonna take a damp brush and especially kind of like around this lighter eye area. I still wanna make sure it's a light value, but I'm just gonna kind of blend some of the colors out around it. So it doesn't feel so blocky. Sometimes just taking a damp brush and blending out, it gives it character and it gives it that imperfectness that is more true to how hair is or fur is. And same thing, so we did it kind of around the eyes. I'm also gonna do it a little bit around here, around the cheeks a bit. Again, we're not trying to lose the highlights, we're just trying to soften them if they just got a little bit too bright compared to the medium and dark values that we put in. And if you're trying to blend out and you're just not getting any color to move, then you can pick up some color from your palette. That's not a big deal at all. I'm gonna to switch to my two. I just had an idea because especially along the nose, there's some really fine, 
darker hairs. So I'm wondering if I switch to a smaller brush to do the rough texture, if that might help communicate that area a bit better. Did okay. Did okay. Just kind of looking at the marks, seeing where I need to darken any. Now I'll have to admit that this project out of all of the ones in the box I think is the most difficult. So you guys are doing awesome. And I'm going to soften, I'm going to pick up some color and just soften the highlighted edge. We still want it to be a lighter value, but we don't want it to feel like it's jumping out at us and actually closer to us than like the actual face. So sometimes we just got to soften it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to do the eyes. So how I like to approach eyes is I like to put the colored colorful portion of the eye in first, let that dry completely, and then we do all of the black, okay? So there are green eyes here, or kind of like this goldish green, and I want you to notice that, especially on this left eye here, the value that's happening right here on the right-hand side of that is a much lighter value than what is happening here. On this right-hand one, it's not as obvious. You can tell, actually just looking at it, that there's no glare spots and there's no highlight. I put those in on my own because um, I wanted it to feel like it was more evenly lit. Um, and just so you know, as the artist, you can do that. And because we have Bleed Proof White, if you wanna try following the photo reference exactly and seeing how that feels, then you can decide, oh, that worked out great. That actually feels super realistic. I thought that it would feel really disjointed. so. I decided to put the glare spots in, but it's your painting, it's your choice. So I'm going to mix a green. I'm gonna take honey brown and I'm gonna take blue till I get kind of a gold green. I'm gonna start with the color on the right hand side. Put that in first, use water and then blend out that color using water. And if your iris, it's the iris, right? Yes. Um, loses its shape a little bit. Since we're doing black all around it, it's okay. Like we can reshape it. So same thing on this side, starting with the darker green adding water and letting that move. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this light honey that's gonna act as like my gold glare. And then back up to green. Okay, and then once it's dry, I'm gonna grab just pure Payne's Gray and start to put in the pupil working around the glare spots. Just be super careful when you're getting to the part that's near the edge of the eye and the iris. Amazing. Then we'll do underneath 
Isn't that funny how putting the I in, you're like, oh, it's an animal. Yeah. Okay, we're okay, we're okay. And then using, picking up more paints gray, what I like to do to get a nice thin line is I actually like to smush my brush one side, flip it to the other, so then it's like a pinched tip. And we actually take this black across the entire top. Like so. And I always do this. I definitely should have done the left eye first. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. And we're gonna essentially repeat that um, on the left hand side. Be careful not to put your wrist in all of that black you just put down. <laughs> I'm really focused here because I'm making sure I'm staying true to the to the lines. One little crooked mark can really change the shape of your your eyeballs here, so I'm being careful. And then we're gonna take our mark, our brush here, and do a consistent line across the top here. Okay. We're gonna let that dry for a second. And then one thing that I'm going to do to really kind of give my eyes that extra hit of depth is I'm going to mix a little bit more Payne's Gray with that green. And then right on the top here, put in that extra shadow right along the top on both eyes. And then you guys can decide, do I need to tone down some of the highlight on here? I might just do a medium there and here. Okay. Now the other thing that I like to do is as you can see, I have two glare spots on each eye. Um, but something that I've noticed when it comes to pets in general is they do have two glare spots, but one is white and then one is more of a medium value. So I'm going to take a damp brush and just soften one of the glare spots on both eyes. I'm going to soften this outside one here. And then you can even soften a little bit of that big white one. And you can decide if you need to soften it more like looking. I feel like I want to soften this one a little bit more. And then doesn't that just feel a little bit more realistic yeah, when they're when they're big and bright and white both of them it feels a bit more cartoony which isn't bad but um to really make it seem uh more realistic you just soften the the white okay so now that we put in our eyes and we feel better about the fact that this is a cat <laughs> and an animal in general uh, we can go and look at our brown marks our light values our medium values and decide you know 
what more does this need? All of this kind of stuff. Just looking at my reference photo, this one and this one, the colors are slightly different on my painted reference photo. I definitely leaned into the honey brown. This one is reading slightly more red. I just want to call attention to the fact that we are mixing these colors here and um, that's okay. I'm okay with the fact that sometimes it's reading more of that red instead of yellow, but I am missing, I don't know, I really love a warm brown, like orange and yellow undertones. And so I'm gonna put some of this, I'm just gonna do like a honey wash in some of these areas. Honey wash mixed with Payne's Gray, so it's not like bright yellow. Um, and just kind of introduce that color to my cat. Because if you look at here, there's like pinkness, right? But there's also like, especially right here, I feel like there's more warmth. Also, um, photographs aren't always the best reference when it comes to color. Think about when you try and take a picture of a sunset. Think about how much color changes depending on the lighting in the room um, and that kind of stuff. So always kind of like allow yourself a little bit of creative freedom when using colors instead of having to go off photographs exactly because photographs sometimes are not the best source for things like that. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Also concerning your first, your reference picture included in the box, we've talked about this before, but it is near impossible to get a scan and a print to be the same as the original, mm -hmm, just in mm -hmm, tone. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, that's my two cents. I am also going to just kind of soften this under the eye area, just doing a light wash. Be careful not to bleed into the black. Okay. And then we basically just kind of like keep going around and around. Where does it need more color? Where does it need more shadow? Where does it need more texture? Um, all of that kind of stuff. I feel like I can do another layer underneath the face here. Notice that my brush marks are kind of curved and loose, mimicking the overall shape of the fur. And blending out if it just is getting too dark. And then kind of at the sides here, the val it kind of like evens out. Sarah, your weird dog is looking real good. <laughs> Thank you. Let's do, it's really dark right here on the chest, so if you need to do another layer. And this is a long tutorial, we're at over an hour, but we're doing great. I knew this one was gonna take a while too. And that's just how it goes, you know, and that's okay. Again, this, we try to let you guys know that this is just more an intermediate box in general, and that's because we are sitting here for a while and, you know, taking a long time to paint and all of that kind of stuff. So acknowledge that and say it's okay. Okay, so we need to go in and address the ears. So I'm gonna take a medium value brown and using my six, I'm just gonna start putting in, actually, let's move to my two. I'm going to put in some of these loose kind of hair, long hairs. And then I'm going to go back in with Bleed Proof White and do some highlights on them. But we're trying to kind of cover up all of the, like if you look at the hair here, I'm seeing a dark value here against like that background, but then it looks white here and then dark here again. So this is where having like bleed proof white comes in handy. And 
And if there's any areas that you're like, oh, it's just too dark or too light, remember you can just blend and mess it up. Sometimes just going in with a damp brush, spreading stuff around, making it muddy and messy, it's just what it needs. Now I do feel like I lost a little bit, like see how like thick and dark this top part is compared to my reference photo here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see what it's like if I just try and bring some highlights back in using some bleed proof white. So you can take some bleed proof white and we don't want it white, white, right? Because that would just be too bright. So I can pick up a little bit of color with the bleed proof white. And let's just see if I can put some of these back in. Now remember, this is opaque. So whenever you use bleed proof white as just a highlight or like what we're doing now, like mixing in, it's gonna have a slightly different texture than the rest of the painting because it is opaque and not transparent. That's okay. I just want to call that out. Let's break some of it up. Sometimes you just need to do a highlighted hair or something too. That feels better. Okay. We're getting near the end here. So what we need to do is if you look at cats and dogs, they have these like dots where the whiskers come out of their cheeks. So we're gonna put those in. Payne's gray, brown. And they might be kind of covered up at this point, but just kind of eyeball it. I'm just using my two. What I love about painting animals is like, no matter what, they're gonna have an expression and a personality about them. Like this cat that I'm painting right now is looking like, like this one looks a little bit like, um, I don't know, maybe more innocent. Okay. You know what I'm that. saying? Yeah. Where this one, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling like this cat can't be bothered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. looks slightly bored. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like this cat is staring at me saying, why aren't you done yet? <laughs> I'm gonna round the top of this eye a little bit more. And um, I think that's, I just think that's funny. I love, um, I love when their little personalities come out. And sometimes like, you don't necessarily intend to, they just kind of have an expression on their face. And then you go, oh, that's how you're feeling, okay. And then Michael, I'm gonna need you to think of a name for this cat. Okay, it's Buster. <laughs> That is a perfect name for this cat. <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, and now I'm going to use Bleed Proof White for my whiskers. So, just so you know, um, when it comes to whiskers, they're one of those things that really, sorry, that was my heat gun. Um, one of those things that really help make the animal feel realistic but they're hard because they're long, thin lines. And sorry, my um, bleed proof white dried out, so I'm actually just mixing water into it and mixing it together to get it reactivated. Um, and I'm using the other side of my paintbrush. If your paint gets too hard, don't use your bristles to reactivate it, use your handle, so then you don't damage your bris bristles. Um, so if you don't want to put in whiskers, that's okay. Also, if you have like a white gel pen, go ahead and use that sucker. That is easier than trying to get long, thin lines with a round. Um, or if you have a liner brush, use that. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> okay, so I grabbed Bleed Proof White, and when you do whiskers, you just have to commit. And you say, sometimes whiskers are thick, which is true, some of them are thick. If you missed a line, you just say, oh, that one just didn't go all the way, that's okay. And they go, notice that they're going in a bunch of different directions. 
sometimes you can only see like, notice how on this whisker specifically, I don't see where it's attached. It's like black. Don't worry, honey, I won't paint on your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him being like, uh, but do you see how like you don't see this thick white whisker actually connect to the cheek? So that is okay if you only see parts of some of the whiskers here and there. I imagine that side is more difficult because it's against your natural hand. It is. The left hand side doing whiskers is so hard for me. Um, and so this is where if you like have a drawing board or you can like turn, that's helpful. Okay. And then if you want to, like if there's any highlights you want to do, um, like let's do a couple in the ear. They actually have little like forehead whiskers. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. Thick brow. Yeah. I don't know what they're actually called. Okay. Beautiful. We did it. Holy cow, we did it. We did it. And this was hard. And just know that like, you can absolutely do more layers than what I just did. If there are some areas where you're like, mm, actually that value is reading on my painting as a light value, but on the reference photo, it's a medium value. Go ahead and tone that down. Like you can play with this. You can, but hopefully by me explaining my process to you about how adding the layers, looking at the references and going for it, you can feel more comfortable and confident approaching your own painting, your own cat painting. And what was this cat's name? Buster. Buster. Buster, it was a pleasure painting you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, thank you guys for painting with me. I hope that you learned something and that you had fun. I appreciate you even taking the time to, to do this. This was hard. Um, and I think that's all I got to say. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.